Hi everyone and welcome to this special emergency Hash Reconnect Julian stream. We are meeting here with all of you today because we are gravely concerned for Julian because his right to communicate with his loved ones, both online and in person, has been restricted by the Ecuadorian embassy. Brian Eno and Yanis Varoufakis restored Julian Assange's access to visitors and the outside world. It is with great concern that we heard that Julian Assange has lost access to the internet and the right to receive visitors at the Ecuadorian London Embassy. Only extraordinary pressure from the US and the Spanish governments can explain why Ecuador's authorities should have taken such appalling steps in isolating Julian. Only recently, the government of Ecuador granted Julian citizenship and a diplomatic passport in a bid to allow him safe passage from London. The UK government, under heavy pressure from the US government, refused to exploit this opportunity to end Julian's detention, even after the Swedish authorities announced that no charges were or would be laid against him. Now it seems that the Ecuadorian government that has been leaned on mercilessly, not only to stop attempting to provide Julian with a diplomatic route to safety, but to drive him out of their London embassy as well. In addition to US pressure, the Spanish government is also using its leverage over Ecuador to silence Julian's criticisms of Madrid's imprisonment of Catalan politicians, and in particular, of the arrest of Catalonia's former premier in Germany. Clearly, Ecuador's government has been subjected to bullying over its decision to grant Julian asylum, support, and ultimately diplomatic status. Naturally, Quito cannot admit that it is buckling under that pressure, and it argues in public that Julian's tweets over Catalonia are responsible for the decision to isolate him. Of course, this is utterly unbelievable. Julian is now a citizen of Ecuador and as such enjoys the full protections of his freedom of expression guaranteed by the Constitution of Ecuador. Additionally, the only reason Julian is holed up in Ecuador's London embassy and why Ecuador gave him asylum in the first place is precisely because he empowered whistleblowers' freedom of expression and defended our right to know the truth about practices of the US and other Western powers that the latter found inconvenient once exposed to the light of day. A world in which whistleblowers are hounded, small countries are forced to violate their cherished principles and politicians are jailed for pursuing peacefully their political agenda is a deeply troubled world. A world at odds with the one the liberal establishment in Europe and the United States proclaimed as its artifact since the end of the Cold War. With these thoughts in mind, we call upon all citizens of good conscience to send a message to the Ecuadorian authorities asking that Julian's access to the outside world be restored, and another, more pertinent one, to the British authorities to end Julian's detention. And there is a petition that people can sign in support of ending Julian's isolation immediately. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Susie Dawson. I'm a journalist, I'm an activist, and I'm the current leader of the Internet Party of New Zealand. I have assembled here today with a few key friends and some other supporters of Julian who will be coming to speak to you as well about the situation. We have done so for several reasons. Firstly, because Julian's human right to communication, to freedom of communication, freedom of speech, must be restored by Ecuador immediately. And we are going to keep organizing together and making as much noise as possible until those freedoms, those human rights are restored to him. I would like to hand over now to the Internet Party founder and visionary, tech entrepreneur Kim.com. Kim is a close friend of Julian and has been for a number of years. This is a, a very appalling situation that Julian Assange is in now. Um, what the US government has tried to accomplish for many, many years uh, has uh, happened today. They silenced Julian Assange. He cannot receive any visitors at the embassy and he has been disconnected 
from all communications, including the internet, meaning uh, his basic human right uh, to communicate and uh, for free speech have now been uh, undermined. I have asked everyone who is following me uh, to write a tweet uh, to Lenin Moreno and let him know, the president of Ecuador, that we ask him kindly and respectfully to return Julian Assange to the internet. And we demand that Ecuador will not give in to the pressure of forces that uh, want to destroy Julian Assange and WikiLeaks. And let us be absolutely clear why they want to achieve that. They don't want to achieve that because Julian Assange is a criminal. They don't want to achieve that because Julian Assange is a terrorist. They want to achieve the silencing of Julian Assange because he is providing us with truth, with facts, with transparency that we don't get from our governments anymore. He is the one person in the world who, who has fought more for your rights uh, than anybody else in recent history. This man does not deserve to be silenced. We should all come together. We should all work together to uh, right this wrong. How do you feel about today's news and, what, and what's been done to Julian? Oh, I'm devastated for him. I think that's, this is really, really bad. Like to, to be stuck in that embassy anyway and now without any contact with the outside world just must be the most disheartening thing. It's, you know, like solitary confinement. It is like jail, like... Um, and you can't even, no phone calls or anything. But, um, but yeah, I just think it's, <laughs> it's really tragic. And I, I hope that we can actually, um, that this goes the reverse for them, that everyone starts retweeting the tweet that they want him to, uh, to, to, to take down. None of, no one who, like, has a go at him, at least to people like us, benefits at all from him being in that embassy no one like the only people who benefit from him being in that embassy is very powerful people so no one who has you know who's just an average joe who wants you know a good life for their kids and stuff and a, like a safe planet should be uh should be doing the the work of the establishment in trying to keep him in there it's, it's really wrong and it, i like you know and i thank anyone who's out there who is going into bat for julian because you're on the right side of history and history will remember that you are and we will make sure of that this is not something that will go missing Okay, so we're going to make sure that the people who stood up for him, uh, that we remember who they are, rather than what happened with the fucking Iraq war, the people who, you know, like, we forget so quickly who the monsters are. They're forgiven so quickly. Well, that's not going to happen this time. There'll be no forgiving and no forgetting. Yeah, they're not just forgiven, they're re-employed. Yes, re rehabilitated, re-employed. And, you know, like, and like George W. Bush just danced the other yeah. day, and, that and was CNN, yeah, all over the place. What the fuck I is that? that out. I do not give a shit about that murdering warmonger. He killed a million people. He will always have killed a million people. That's who he is. Kim, your prediction that this would have ramifications in Spain and in Catalonia with the people of Spain has already come true. I've just been sent this information that I would like to show you. We have just hit 75 million impressions on hash reconnect Julian from over 7,800 separate accounts tweeting about this hashtag. We have, it's clocking one tweet a second currently. Um, for a total of over 18,000 tweets just in the course of this event. But look where those tweets are coming from. I'll try and make this a little bit bigger so you can see it a bit better. Wow. 
Yeah. Number one, United States of America. Number two, Spain. Four hundred and fifty. And that is what I said earlier. Spain has now achieved the absolute opposite of what they wanted to achieve. They have now put this topic on everybody's mind in Spain, especially in Catalonia. And uh, this is just going to backfire, you know? And you wonder why these people in power who abuse their power never learn from the mistakes of people that have done this kind of stuff so many times before in the past. They always fail. You know, you cannot... Uh, try and uh, uh, erase the truth, especially historic truth, especially history. You cannot go and try and erase it. We see it over and over again, you know, where uh, there were Holocaust deniers and there were all kinds of people trying to change history. And this is the sick thing right now. Spain is doing that. And by doing it, they are making themselves look absolutely foolish and uh, one has to wonder, isn't this, again, another great achievement of Julian Assange to know exactly where the pressure point is, to apply the, the needle and make them explode? Uh, and by, by exploding, exposing themselves uh, in, in the way they have. You know, I, I take my head off to Julian Assange for being so brilliant in just nailing the point, uh, uh, you know, of, of what it would mean for Germany to extradite this man. And it's not going to happen now, you know. And that's thanks to Julian. That's probably entirely thanks to Julian Assange, this guy is going to get justice, you know. What you described, it's almost like, it reminds me of uh, what they call the Streisand effect. Yeah. You know? the right term so, you know they don't want to bring attention to something but then in turn their own actions bring a lot more attention to it than than they wanted they hope than they hoped for i had promised several times on the stream that there was an official statement from courage foundation coming out and that i'd read it and it had i've just okay. been sent it by emmy um it doesn't say a lot that we didn't know already but here it is ecuador suspends julian assange's internet access and denies visitors. So it's basically confirming what Brian Eno and Yanis Varoufakis had said earlier today. Ecuador has confirmed today that it has suspended Julian Assange's internet access in the Ecuadorian embassy in London. In a message posted to Twitter, the Ecuadorian government says that the suspension is the result of Assange breaking a late 2017 agreement not to issue messages that supposed an interference in relation to other states. And there's screenshots there of the communications from Ecuador. Courage Foundation can confirm that in addition to having his internet access cut off, Julian Assange is currently unable to receive visitors at the Ecuadorian embassy. In response to the suspension, Brian Eno and Yanis Varoufakis issued a letter entitled Restore Julian Assange's Access to Visitors and the Outside World. And then there is a quote on that, from that. And then it says, the letter concludes by calling on supporters to sign a new petition launched by DM25, calling for an end to Assange's isolation. And then it links to, I believe, the change.org petition. Yes, the change.org petition, which you'll find on our hashtag and in many of our tweets. So that's the official word from the Courage Foundation. For anyone, anyone want to give a reaction? Yeah, I like to say something. Um, it's you know, it's uh, repeating <clears throat> what is already out there. Uh, the person that I admire the most when it comes to things like this and and putting it all into a very simple message as Glenn Greenwald and WikiLeaks has just retweeted a tweet from him that I would like to read to the stream. Uh, Glenn Greenwald says, it's bizarre for a country to grant someone political asylum, then condition it on being barred from communicating with the outside world. It makes a mockery of asylum. 
once proudly defiant, Ecuador is now depicting itself as a rather subservient to the West. Glenn Greenwald's uh, tweet really nails it. You cannot, on the one hand, give someone asylum, but then silence them at the same time. It's, it's, it m makes a mockery of it. And that is exactly what's happening here right now. I have a comment I'd like to add in response to what Courage Foundation said there. And it's just that I want to point out like um, that this entire stream is so successful in reaching so many people. And I want to um, just say it strikes me as a, an, uh, an example of how effective independent media is becoming. You know, we are the ones that are sitting here, not only uh, encouraging people to speak out for Assange, but reporting that this is happening. You know, you don't see CNN rec reporting this in that same type of way. So I just thought that was really fantastic. And the way that Susie has pointed out the metrics of this stream, you know, reaching so many people. I mean, this is a real success in just independent journalism. So I just wanted to say that. Thanks. Elizabeth, um, I've just been sent the, I feel like I'm forever going on about yeah. metrics, but I have just been sent the next lot of metrics and it's only been 10, 15 minutes since the last lot. Um, I have to show you this because it's so significant. We're at 92,165,000 impressions, 8,606 accounts. I have never seen anything like it at our most successful anti-spy bill event last year. And that was went right around the world. We, you know, we had Kiriakou and many other amazing people with us. We got 8 million Twitter impressions and that was considered a, an astronomical success. We're at 92,165,000. Incredible. I really don't understand. It's really cool. <laughs> In the U S. It's trending in the UK, it's trending in New Zealand, and it's trending in Canada. It's at number two in New Zealand, number three in the UK, and I can't remember what number, but somewhere up there in Canada. But apparently in the United States, you're Look, not allowed to know US, about it. Yeah. My flaws <laughs> in five words is trending, and it only ha it's trending at number two, and it only has 2,767 tweets. What? <laughs> Ray, I know Ray wanted to say something. Break yeah. in. Yeah. I guess we'll talk a good bit about the Ecuadorians and the Spanish and all, but let's talk about the British. I mean, the UN has decided that uh, Julian Assange is being held illegally. It's illegal detention. It's against uh, not only human rights, but UN law. Uh, the, that the British courts were in error in what they did. Now, I would just appeal to the, to the English, the Wales, and the North Irish people, have you no shame? I mean, we went through this 15 years ago when Tony Blair and George Bush thumbed their nose at the UN, invaded Iraq illegally. Kofi Annan said it was illegal. Of course it was illegal. There was no Security Council approval and there was no threat. And they went ahead and did it anyway. Now, it would be so bad uh, if it weren't for, as Caitlin has mentioned, a million people are dead because of that. Now, the UN has served a very useful function in the past, but if people feel free because daddy says so, daddy being Uncle Sam, and the British say, oh, well, we don't have to, you know, the UN, <laughs> the UN decided this is illegal detention, <laughs> so what? I mean, I, I just asked the question. And maybe this is a function of my heritage where uh, my Irish uh, forefathers suffered under this kind of English disrespect for international law. But have you no shame? Have you British people no shame to let people like Theresa May and the Mokadi Mooks of which my Irish grandmother talked, uh, let, let these kinds of decisions stand against international law and against the ruling of the courts under the UN? Do you have no shame? This is a, a crucial moment, I think, morally for all citizens. We're being right now that we can control the media. We don't even have to. Like, none of us have any associations other than, you know, uh, the fact that we line up in truth. There's 
we don't have, you know, a boss or, or anyone that's connecting us other than we see, seeing the same thing and we jump on and we talk about it and we get to know each other and we're creating media here. So that's extremely exciting and we can keep doing that. Um, and that's the good news story, but that's, that's available to everyone. Uh, and, and yeah, you've got to like take this opportunity. We, we can do this now. And, you know, this door might close on us too. The, the censorship is getting pretty bad. So we've got to keep, like, we've got the door open a crack. We've got to keep pushing. And, and now is the time to push, mm -hmm. um, especially when, you know, crisis moments happen like this. Th these are our opportunities to really shove. Um, so I encourage everyone to, you know, to talk out about it, take heart. We're listening. That's an amazing amount of... Um, uh, people who are uh, who are hearing our message right now, and we're just a group of, you know, idiots on the internet. You can do this too. Join us. Let's let's get this thing over and done with. Let's take back control, you know, and return the the power to the people. Return of the will of the planet back to the will of the people, not to a few fucking plutocrats who think they know better than everyone else, <laughs> just willing to spend their money on solving problems by killing people. That's the extent of their intelligence. We can't allow this anymore. This is not some sort of benevolent sort of overlordship or whatever. They're horrible people. They're killing most of us and they will kill all of us if we're not careful. So now is the time to stand up. I've just been told that Julian Assange is tweeting, uh, sorry, is trending at number four in the US. His name is but that our hashtag is not trending in the US, although it's trending everywhere else. And apparently um, the net effect of that is that people who are clicking on the Julian Assange trend are seeing all of the MSM official story line about what's happening to him, rather than seeing our hashtag, clicking on it and, and seeing the vigil and hearing the voices that are being presented here. So I've just been told that is categorical proof of, of censorship. And uh, actually, it's interesting that you mentioned Catalonia again, because um, Emmy recently sent me um, a copy of the latest, the most recent comments that Julian Assange made on the topic of Catalonia. He was asked a question and it said, uh, when you say that the deputy of El Pay, uh, which is the uh, Spanish, um, you know, very mainstream outlet, uh, libeled you, are you referring to his articles arguing that Russia is behind the Catalonian independence movement and your support for it? And he said, uh, Assange responded saying yes, and not simply that, I'm referring to the accuracy of my comments on the independence of Catalonia. I have supported article one of the United Nations, there must be self-determination for peoples, not self-determination for every family or small town, but self-determination for a people. Catalans have their own language, culture, and so they are a people. They have the right to self-determination. Whether they should be independent is an entirely different question. My own personal belief is that it would be better if the rest of Spain was nice to them and they were nice to the rest of Spain and they all lived happily together. But that isn't my decision to make. That is their decision to make. And so that's specifically the quote Emmy sent me and I want to share it with you all. And I thought that was really interesting the way you perfectly sum that up, Kim. Uh, I think... I think that confirms what Kim was saying. This is an unusual character, this guy, you know. Uh, he's willing to put the welfare, the justice for other people before himself. I mean, that's so rare in this current civilization that no wonder people have trouble believing, you know. I mean, they'd rather believe he's a Russian agent, right? I mean, <laughs> without any proof or anything like that. So. It doesn't parse with the, with the people who just can't accept the notion that there is this selflessness, this selflessness, uh, which obtains when a justice issue comes, comes into fore. And here is Julian saying, you know, probably I should kind of relax and, and you know, let this one go, for God's sake. I mean, hello, this, this could affect me. I didn't do that, you know? And for people, people of faith, you know, I'm a follower of Jesus of Nazareth. And, you know, people say, well, you know, his dad said, no, kill him. No, that wasn't it. He, he got killed because he was a, 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 an agitator for justice. He could have died 
peacefully in his bed if he didn't take on the system, the religious, the Roman authorities, and that's what did him in. And so that's what made him selfless. And I don't know how Julian feels about that example, but I feel real strong that, you know, this is an example that is very rare and hard to understand by people who are so, so used to the go along to get along and so unaccustomed to people who show real courage. And in my view, Kim had it exactly right, and yourself too, Elizabeth, that uh, this is what Julian is all about and why I think most of us really admire what he's done and need to stand up for him now. I view him to be almost like a modern day Socrates. Hopefully he li he, the outcome is different from Socrates, but I'm saying that I think that when you look at truth tellers hundreds of, hundreds of years from now, as I think people lose the historical perspective, they're gonna look at Julian Assange as the ultimate truth teller. And they're also going to look at people who who can't stand the truth that he publishes because the people who don't want him to publish are also the people who happen to be writing uh, their criminal acts for all to see. Um, and so when, when the DNC and Podesta emails were published, the reaction from the Democratic Party wasn't, hey, let's go ahead and clean up our act. It was... <laughs> Well, how dare you expose how horrible we are? This is a plot from Russia. You must be silenced and we must attack you. Meanwhile, because I always thought I was naive, I thought, you know, if Trump wins, they're going to look in the mirror and they're going to become a better political party and everything's going to be better. Instead, what they did is they dug their heels in and it's, it was, an, I know, very intelligent people the first thing they said, and I was so surprised, was, oh, Assange worked with the Russians. And for, for what purpose? Why would the Russians hack the DNC? There's no classified intelligence there. And anyway, we already knew Hillary was dishonest and corrupt. So what's, what's, what, what's the new thing we found out? Um, we found out that they tried to use Bernie Sanders' religion against him. They said that an atheist was easier to beat than a Jew. But of course... Um, all the quote unquote anti-fascist people who, who don't like WikiLeaks, they leave that out of the equation. They don't acknowledge that there was anti-Semitism, there was such a dirty behavior that Debbie Wasserman Schultz had to resign. Others had to resign. CNN actually fired uh, Donna Brazil because of the, the WikiLeaks uh, DNC emails. And instead of, instead of making sure that, that, that the Democratic Party is fixed, the corruption is fixed, they attack Julian Assange and they blame Assange for all the problems that the Democrats have. It's just, it's unbelievable to me how people, how people, rational people act in such an irrational manner when their dirty laundry is exposed. Oh, he embarrassed them. And, um, and instead of going, all right, yeah, it's pretty bad here. We should clean this up. Um, they started blaming everyone except themselves. It was really, really weird to watch. Um, but it was also like it became quite a genius move. Like I've got my um, Tim Black T-shirt, I'm a Russian bot on right now because <laughs> anyone who actually says anything that's real or good in this world anymore is suddenly a Russian bot. They created that out of nothing. Um so, and that all stems back to those emails um, and how upset they were about it. And so it's, it's created this situation now where they can silence pretty much any issue that is, uh, you know, not helpful to the establishment. They can, you know, Dapple or Flint, Michigan, everything. If you just want to talk about anything that's wrong with the world, now you're a Russian bot. So, you know, they allow some things. Oh, you're in a piece um, yeah, yeah, or a useful idiot of Russia, or Putin puppet, or um, it goes on and on. Hey, I would like to read um, um, my poem. I wrote a poem for Julian. So awesome. If you would let me do that. Great. Um, that would be very cool. Because <laughs> it kind of summarizes my whole feelings about the whole Julian thing. <laughs> Julian because no one else would. A white crane sits in a cage. 
in a sprawling city, passing messages to pigeons. Because no one else would, a dream guide sits shackled for letting in light and the world lines up to spit in his face while heads inside screams bark and snarl. Because no one else would, white hairs line the floor and the air is getting stuffy and it's growing harder to breathe. My great grandchildren will scarcely believe that such a creature could ever have existed. That's so unfair. Why'd they do that to him? Why didn't the police save him? Where were the grown ups? Why did that happen? Why did he have to do that? Because no one else would, child, I will be forced to say. Many of us, many of us could have, but no one else would. Yeah, and I drew him his little window as a birdcage with the pigeons flying away. So 